we begin the first webinar by talking about the new nutrition facts and ingredient labels. By understanding the nutritional contents of what we eat, we can make informed food choices that contribute to our health lifelong eating habits. Since today is Mother's Day, I want to honor and thank all the mothers and women who exhibit mother-like qualities for your daily serving of unconditional love, patience, and hard work. Not to mention your sleepless nights and caffeine intake. From nutrition and ingredient facts label, we went on to talk about various food groups shown here through my plate and the importance of eating nutrient dense foods for they provide both the macro and micronutrients that our body needs for proper cell functions and cell growth. And if you don't remember which food gives you which vitamins and minerals, no worries. Just eat a variety of fruits and vegetables with all the colors of a rainbow. The third week, we focused on the dietary guidelines published by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, USDA. This latest edition covered specific nutritional needs at various life stages from infancy all the way to older adulthood. We saw again the importance of eating a nutrient dense and diverse diet throughout different stages of life. The fourth week, we looked at how foods break down and how nutrients are absorbed and distributed in the bloodstream and the lymphatic system for trillions of cells inside our body. Our diet directly affects the health of our cells, particularly the cell membrane, cell nucleus, and mitochondria the powerhouses where our energy sources of ATPs are produced. The fifth week, we talked about free radicals and antioxidants and how food with antioxidant properties can protect cell damages and diseases caused by free radicals inside the body. Last week, we talked about weight management and the health benefits of maintaining a healthy weight. We saw this balanced act of calories in and calories out with our diet as calories in and BMR and exercise as calories out in the equation of body weight. We talked about BMR as it stands for the basal metabolic rate, the number of calories that your body burns while resting. Today, we will see how physical activity is crucial for weight management and for our overall health. Do you know that the month of May has been declared by President Biden as the National Physical Fitness and Sports Month. President Biden talked about many Americans struggle to get regular physical activity in their daily lives. He went on to say that the inequities that we have seen through Social economic disparities, lack of opportunities for safe play, and limited access to programs for increased activity are just a few of the inequities 
that many Americans face. He went on to say that during this National Phys Physical Fitness and Sports Month, he encourages all Americans to stay active and to make physical activity a priority and an essential part of everyday living. The physical activity guidelines for Americans is issued by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, HHS. It complements the dietary guidelines for Americans it, it, as they are both a joint effort of HHS and USDA. And together, the two documents provide guidance for the public on the importance of being physically active and eating a healthy diet to promote good health and reduce the risk of chronic diseases. You can download a digital copy or you can order a printed version free of charge from health.gov website. For children and adolescents, physical activity can help improve cognition, bone health, fitness, heart health, and reduce the risk of depression. Regular physical activity also makes it less likely that obesity and related risk factors will develop and more likely that children remain healthy when they become adults. For adults, physical activity helps prevent eight types of cancer, bladder, breast, colon, endometrium, esophagus, kidney, stomach, and lung, and improve quality of life for cancer survivors reduces the risk of dementia, including Alzheimer's disease. All-cause mortality, heart disease, stroke, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, and depression, and improves bone health and physical function. For older adults, physical activity also lowers the risk of falls and injuries from falls. For all groups, physical activity helps maintain a healthy weight. How much physical activity does your child or teenager need? The guidelines recommend children and adolescents aged 6 through 17 years old get 60 minutes or more of moderate to vigorous physical activity daily. Most of the 60 minutes or more per day should be either moderate or vigorous intensity aerobic physical activity. And this should include at least three days of bone strength and muscle strengthening physical activities. What about physical activity for adults? The first key guideline for adults is to move more and sit less. So shall we stand up and stretch? Let's stand up and stretch. Okay, you can stand longer if you like. <laughs> This recommendation is based on new evidence that shows a strong relationship between increased sedentary behavior and increased risk of all-cause mortality, heart disease, and high blood pressure. All physical activity, especially moderate to vigorous activity, can help offset these risks. The multicolored graph on the right is adapted from a meta-analysis of over 1 million people. It demonstrates the relationship of daily sitting time on the y-axis and moderate to vigorous physical activity on the x-axis with a risk of all-cause mortality. 
it clearly shows that the longer sitting time without any moderate to vigorous activity is most detrimental to your health. At the greatest time spent sitting the top, the risk of all-cause mortality begins to decrease. Color become, becomes from a chain to change from red to orange, from yellow to even to green, with small additional addition of moderate to vigorous physical activity. At the greatest volume of modest moderate to vigorous physical activity, the risk is low, even for those who sit the most, shown on the upper right corner. This tells us that in inactive adults who replace sitting time with light intensity physical activities can reduce the risk of all-cause mortality. In addition, research shows physical activities can decrease pain of osteoarthritis, reduce disease progression for hypertension, reduce disease progression for type 2 diabetes, reduce symptoms of anxiety and depression, and improve cognition for those with dementia, multiple sclerosis, ADHD, and Parkinson's diseases. How much physical activity do adults need? The guidelines recommend adults do at least 150 minutes to 300 minutes a week of moderate intensity or 75 minutes to 150 minutes a week of vigorous intensity aerobic physical activity or an equivalent combination of both. Preferably, aerobic activity should be spread out throughout the week, and adults should also do muscle strengthening activities of moderate or, or greater intensity, and that involve all major muscle groups on two or more days a week. For older adults, balance training should also be included. And when older adults cannot do 150 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic activity a week because of chronic conditions, they should be as physically active as their abilities and conditions allow. Get moving for your brain. In a recent study, 454 older adults underwent yearly physical exams and cognitive tests for 20 years and agreed to donate their brains for research when they died. The participants were given accelerometers, which track their movement and physical activity around the clock. Those who moved more scored better on the memory and thinking test and and every increase in physical activity by one standard deviation was associated with a 31% lower risk of dementia. Let's take a closer look at the three components of aerobic activity. The guidelines recommend at least 150 minutes a week of moderate aerobic intensity. Now, what's intensity? Intensity is how hard you work. The intensities most often studied are moderate and vigorous. Moderate like brisk walking, vigorous like running or jogging. Frequency, how often do you do the aerobic activity? And duration time. How long do you do it at one time? What are the methods to assess intensity of aerobic physical activity? We first need to know what a MET or a metabolic equivalent of task is. A metabolic equivalent of task is a unit useful for describing the energy expenditure, how much energy you expend of a specific activity. Physical activities frequently are classified by their intensity using the NET value as a reference. 
A MET is the ratio of the rate of energy expended during the activity to the rate of energy expended at rest. For example, one MET is the rate of energy expenditure while at rest, the energy required at the basal metabolic rate. A four MET activity expends four times the energy used by the body at rest. And if a person does a four MET activity for 30 minutes, they have done a four times 30, 120 MET minutes of physical activities. What if a person achieve, um, can a person achieve the same 120 MET differently? Of course, a person can be doing a 8 MET activity, more vigorous activity, such as running, running hard for 15 minutes. And in the result is the same for 8 times 15 gives you 120 MET minute. Muscle strengthening activity has also three components, the intensity, frequency, and sets and repetitions, or how many times that you can do for the repeatedly doing the same muscle contraction, and how many sets do you do? And this chart shows you that if you wanted to build up your muscle, have bulk up the muscle, you want to lift weights that are heavy enough that you can only lift weights for six, between six and 12 reps. If you can do more than 12 reps, you most likely move on to the next phase, the endurance phase. So if you don't want to bulk up your muscle, you want a, a lighter weight, but you do more reps. In addition to muscle strengthening, we are to engage in bone strengthening activity as well. Bone strengthening is also weight bearing or weight loading activity. It produces an impact or a tension force on the bones that promotes bone growth and strength. Many bone strengthening activities can also be aerobic and muscle strengthening. For example, running and jumping rope, jumping rope is really one of my, beginning to be one of my favorite activities to do, are both aerobic and bone strengthening. Whereas lifting weights and doing push-ups are both muscle strengthening and bone strengthening. We have talked about aerobic muscle bone strengthening, and both muscle and bone strengthening. And so, but we, we shouldn't forget that we need to incorporate activities that improve balance and, and flexibility. Too much strength building without flexibility is not well balanced for optimal health. I will conclude today by asking you, what's your move? And can you mix up your physical activities with some aerobic, some muscle strengthening, and some bone strengthening activities? Since everyone's health and physical conditions are different, these physical activity guidelines are only guidelines. You have to find out what activities are good for you? What is perfect for one person might be too much for another. Be careful not to take on too much all at once. You may start by adding one or two activities to your routine and see how you feel. Remember, participating in the activities you enjoy should be fun and not stressful. And if you want additional resources, please go to health.gov slash move your way to find tips that make it easier for you to get a little bit more 
active. Small changes over time can add up to big health benefits. No matter who you are, you can find safe, fun ways to get active, to move your way for your own physical and brain health. We end today by returning to the very first topic of this health and wellness webinar, which is how we can turn on or off of our gene expressions. No, we cannot change our genes, but we can change the way how we eat by eating diet rich in vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants for they keep our cells healthy and function properly. We can control our gene expressions by managing our stress level, by minimizing environmental free radicals, by getting enough sleep, and by engaging in regular exercises. I thank you for joining me on this seven week health and wellness journey. And please send me an email and let me know if you have any questions or let me know if any of these topics that we talked about have made a difference in your personal lives. And please tell me what other health topics you would like to hear in the future. Okay, do you have my email?